It really pains me to do this report, but we are putting the L in NFPL today. Unfortunately, after an eventless summer, uh, normally we see at least a preseason tourney out of the NFPL. Uh, unfortunately, we did not see that over the course of the summer. But we also saw some strange announcements like advertising another league's tryouts and encouraging our own players to participate in those league tryouts. Now, that being said, it is the big bad MASL where there is actual money for players who participate. We did see at least one player uh, make it into the MASL with the Harrisburg Heat, which is a very big step forward from going from amateur futsal to a professional arena soccer league where there will actually be a paycheck. Huge opportunity. We're not taking away from the players that deserve that. However, found it very strange over the summer that we are advertising another league in an already shallow talent pool and saying, yeah, go check out these guys and maybe you'll get a look from the futsal national team coach while you're over there. Very, very strange. But more so than that is as we see now that they have announced here just a couple weeks away from the start of the regular season, a gutted Midwest division last year that had to be split into two divisions. It appears now that we only have four teams representing the Midwest for the NFPL, which is the heart of the NFPL. If you guys are familiar with this league, you know, I've reported on it several times. And uh, unfortunately, it appears that we have lost several members of the league. We have picked up two new faces, but in the process of this, it seems that it is going to be a much, much different look. We have lost the likes of charter members like Futsal Indy, Columbus Futsal, we lost top contenders and, and two years ago runners up Joy Athletic Club, part of Joy of the People out in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We have lost defending champions FC Trizu, who had come in and dominated to league. And if you guys caught our live stream together, Luke and I talked about this a little bit. And Luke had spoke to uh, the owner of FC Trizu, and they had kind of mentioned in more or less uh, words that it was too easy and they didn't see the value in the league. Uh, more so than that, uh, newcomer San Diego Voyagers appear to have only spent one season in the league and are already gone. So we have lost five teams over the course of the summer. Now we have picked up two new faces in the looks of Detroit Imperial, who are currently participating in FCS and uh, look pretty powerful so far. Uh, they've played a young Midwest United team out of Grand Rapids. There's still a lot of that season to go, so we don't know what kind of quality they're bringing to the league, but at first glance appears to be legit. And then we also see the looks of Gloom out of Santa Fe. Santa Fe Gloom coming to the NFPL. More on that to come in December, guys. Keep an eye out because we may have an interview lined up with the founder of Santa Fe Gloom. And we can talk a little bit more about their entrance to the league and what attracted them to the NFPL. But in the grand scheme of things, a, a year of setbacks for this league with the loss of Futsal Indy and Columbus Futsal, you also see half of your women's division gone. So did we only get one season of women's futsal out of the NFPL before it fell apart? And with a, a stumbling finish to this, I am certain that those teams didn't feel super great about where things stood with the women's division. And now on top of that, the men's teams are gone. You take a look at a team like Columbus, semifinalists that played their hearts out and took down some giants during the regular season. They have left the league. Futsal Indy, a mainstay, the original champions of the NFPL back in 2018. They are gone. So the big question now is why? Why have these clubs left the league? Why are we seeing such a major setback in futsal in the NFPL? And, you know, from the, I guess I could say from the uh, alumni of the NFPL, the, the teams that have left, and not just these teams that have left this season, guys. Teams that I've spoke to that have left in years past, a lot of it comes down to money. And, you know, we've, we've talked before on the channel that we have a little bit of an understanding of what the entry fee is to join the league each year. And it is exuberant, especially compared to something like an FCS that's free to join. And you only have to pay if you're fined for mismanagement or or things of this nature. And and in the opposite side of this, we see the NFPL, which asks for a lot of money up front. And the question is, what do they get for the money? Now, I will give NFPL a ton, a ton of credit. You guys know I've said it several times on the channel. This is all personal opinion here, by the way, guys. This is where I step away from the neutral bit of the video as I try to be. I'm a big fan of the NFBL. I followed it since 2019. I think that it is a, a great foundation for the Midwest, but it seems like we just can't seem to continue to move forward. Every time I feel like we take a step forward, we take two steps back. And this is a big case of that. You know, the league 
brought some great advancements last year by streaming most of the games. The only time that we were not able to stream was when teams weren't cooperating with the league to get those streams live on the channel. And it brought great opportunity to the league on YouTube. And they are literally just steps away from potentially being able to monetize the channel. In fact, they can make it that half step way with YouTube's recent changes uh, with the 500 sub mark. They could at least accept donations and stickers from fans who want to participate in the chat and, and highlight specific messages. They're not quite to the ad revenue piece, but they're so close to that step and possibly proving to the world where this YouTube thing could work for amateur leagues. And then here we are just a season later and more than half the teams that participated uh, on the, in the Midwest are gone. We've even heard rumors that one of these teams that is still here uh, had to be convinced to stay. And there was a little bit of negotiation in the final hour that convinced them to stay in the league. Otherwise, the Midwest may have been canceled altogether. And when you look at the teams that are still here, Grand Rapids Olay, another founding team. You see uh, the likes of um, Cadence, which actually is a surprise to me. Of all the teams that could potentially leave over the season, I thought for sure uh, if any of them would be, it would be Cadence. And you guys know how I feel about the representation of that club. I think there's just a lot of mismanagement there. So for them to hang in there is interesting, uh, but very bizarre steps here from the league. And it leaves a couple of concerns. I want to hear what you guys think about this, but I'll go ahead and start the conversation. My concerns are, are twofold. Number one is the cost for amateur teams to join this league is far too high and it doesn't really foster future success. Luke and I said it in a recent live stream that if you're trying to make money off this futsal thing right now, it is too early. We are still in foundational stages. There's no money in futsal and you're just going to drive teams away quickly. It seems that's been the case so far. My second concern is, is the person who is running this league is extremely successful and is and very involved in futsal, which on the surface sounds like a good thing. But one thing that concerns me is the, the, the hands are in so many different cookie jars that we don't technically have someone just focusing on this league to make it successful. And from my experience, it looks like there's really not a lot of um, interest in getting additional help to run the league in a, in a more efficient manner sometimes or, or to hear advice from other people is always kind of a bit of a, a more of an argument if it's not a push. And I think that we can take better steps to help. There are people in the NFPL community that want to help, that want it to grow, but it may be time for the league this year to take an inward look and consider the current structure and how it can improve so that we don't have these mass exoduses in years future. But when you think about the fact that your defending champs don't see the value in coming back and defending that title, that should say a lot. It says a lot about the quality of the teams that are involved. It says a lot about the quality uh, back that the team receives from the league and for them to hang around even through that. So I want to hear what you guys think and what your opinion is in the comments. Do you think that this is just a bad year and it's nothing to be concerned of? Or is this a massive, massive red flag for you guys? What is happening to futsal in the United States? It has been a year of bad news here in the U.S. of A. And I want to hear what you guys think. Is futsal just never going to take that next big step? Or do we need to come together and come up with a new uh, blueprint for how we can grow the sport at an amateur level? Sound off in the comments below, guys. I can't wait to hear from you. Don't forget to join our Discord and continue the conversation there. And until I hear from you then, don't forget to play with your soul.